Hey there, YouTube friends and family. What is going on? Uh, I don't even know where to start with this other than to tell you that today I'm kind of doing a mini review on a Model 94 1894 uh, Winchester 3030. I'm gonna, and this is gonna kind of evolve into story time because this is really interesting how I got my hands on this. And it's not the first time I got my hands on this either, if that kind of allude to it. But as I like to do, I like to talk about the history of a firearm. It, it's kind of cool to know where these things came about, how long they've been around, uh, what are their applications, I mean, who uses them, etc., etc. So, uh, as I already said, this is the model 1894. Okay, Winchester Repeating Arms produced these firearms from uh, 1894, obviously, where it was invented by John Browning, all the way till 2006 is uh, when the U.S. stopped production. They still are produced, but they're produced now in a company outside of, uh, I'm not sure the city, but anyway, in Japan. So you can still get a brand new 1894 Winchester repeating arms uh, in various calibers, but certainly, arguably, at least in my opinion, the 3030 is the iconic model 1894. There are more of these around than anything else. In fact, up until 1983, this was the most popular sold rifle in the history of the of the U.S. There was uh, how many of these were produced? Over seven million five hundred thousand of these were produced, which is insane when you think about it. That is a crazy number of firearms. Uh, why were they so popular? Well, I mean, uh, it, it, there's a, a lot of factors that go into what made this thing so popular. So I'll talk about this particular model. Again, 30-30 in caliber, 20-inch barrel. It's got a seven-round uh, internal tube magazine on a side feed gate, as you can see. It's not heavy. It weighs just under seven pounds. It's 6.8 pounds or 3.1 kilograms. Overall length of this thing is 37.8 inches uh, or 960 millimeters. So it, it's not a, a large gun. It's not a cumbersome firearm. You, this was so popular with uh, big game hunters, deer hunters. Uh, it's not even funny because of its, it was considered to be like a great bush gun. Um, something you could go out in the woods, you could shoot long range with it, although with the bullets, the, the velocity is about 2,500 um, feet per second. Not outstanding. Uh, in the time it was, but there's many more cartridges and modern firearms that have well surpassed this. So why did it remain so popular though? Because it's a lever gun. And lever guns are cool. I mean, they're simple in their functionality. Uh, they're not really prone to break down. That's why they remain popular. And, and now they've become even more popular because of shows like Yellowstone and things like that. People want to get their hands on these old firearms and, and still use them. Okay, uh, 3030, this is at least, I would say, a 45 to 50 year old firearm. I believe I am firing Federal 3030-150 grain Winchester out of this bottle 1894. Open sights. I have a tiny deer at 50 meters and uh, I wear glasses, so I have no idea where I'm going to hit. I'm going to try to hit the deer, obviously. Any idea where I hit? Nope. Way left, maybe? I'll aim for his butt. Seriously? Yep. 
hard to tell that where the dirt's kicking up from this angle. Yeah, I, I think if you can aim at the high back, you might be all right. Yeah, if I knew what the high back looked like with my eyes. I can find the post. There's like not even color in it anymore. I know. It's just black. I don't know. Go go between the legs and above the back by like I don't know, quite a bit. Oh you skipped his back. Okay, I aimed at the target that's in that upper right hand corner. Okay, so yours is shooting, you're, wherever you're putting the post, it's going low. You're about eight inches low. Geez, so I gotta aim for the top of the target then? Uh, no. If you aim for the top of his back, I bet you, you'd hit the middle. I tried to brush his hair. So now I want to kind of go into a uh, story time about this firearm. When I was 17 years old, uh, I saved up my money. I was working at the garage. I was cutting wood. You know, you name it. Stuff that 17 year olds do in order to make a little bit of money. And uh, because deer season was coming around uh, at the end of the summer and being 17 I could finally hunt on my own uh, big game. That's the way the rules used to be. I, I know that they've changed since but back in those days it, that was it. So I wanted to find a deer hunting rifle. There was a guy that lived up the road from where my dad owned the garage and he told my dad one time, yeah I've, kinda, I've got a, a deer rifle I would consider selling and in walked this, okay? And I paid, at the time, I paid $250 for it, which was a lot of money for me. That was my entire summer employment. So I paid $250, uh, had a little bit of money left over, or I worked a little bit, I can't really remember because that was considerable time ago. And I put a side mount, because uh, yeah, that's the only problem I guess with the lever gun is, mounting a scope on this thing is not exactly easy. The new model uh, BLRs by Browning have kind of taken care of that because it's a bottom injection side feed. So, uh, sorry, magazine fed. Um, you still have a slide on it, but you can mount uh, a scope on the top. Here, there's not very many places. So um, there was a side mount plate and then the scope kind of went over top. And the benefit of that is you could still use your sights. So people like that. I liked it. And I had that. And I had it on there and I hunted with it for many years and then, then I joined the military full time and I moved away and so this firearm stayed at my house where I lived in my, with my parents and my dad at some point decided that he would sell it. I don't know why. Um, he knows why. I'm sure at the time, he may have even have told me, but that's since been gone. Like I said, they we're talking about 35 plus years ago. So he sold the firearm and I forgot that he had sold it and we didn't talk about it. And then like 20 years go by and I kind of get back into hunting and I call up my dad and I say, dad, I, you know, uh, do we still have the 30-30s? It's still kicking around. He's like, oh no, I sold that. I was like, oh, right. I do remember that, yeah. So I kind of gave up hope of ever having this firearm in my hands again. Fast forward another 15 years, my uncle, who uh, you know is turning 90 years old, 
and his wife, my aunt Lois, she was kind of worried about him going out in the woods uh, and hunting. He's not as steady on his feet as he used to be. And so he had a couple of firearms in his possession and Lois said, well, I know that, uh, you know, I'm, my middle name is Roy, so I'm named after my uncle Roy. I said, I know that he would appreciate having these firearms. Does he want them? And I said, well, yes, I do. And my dad kind of mentions out of the blue, hey, you'll get your old uh, lever action 3030 back. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, that's who I sold it to. Fast forward a little bit, I go to pick up firearms at my dad's place, and here is this thing sitting in there. The old Winchester Model 94 that I bought when I was 17 years old that has been out of my hands for the last 35 years is now back in my hands. It's sadly not in the same condition that it was when <laughs> I remember. It's a little beat up. The stock is still in good shape. There's no cracks or anything like that. It's a little weathered, a little worn. I don't even know what year this is from, but definitely pre-2006. I'm going to say probably mid-70s or so. Uh, the bluing is a needs a little bit of touching up. It's definitely spent some time riding in the front of a pickup truck. There's a couple of little marks. The crown still looks good on the barrel, but yeah, there's a couple of little nook nicks, and it, it's, like I said, it's seen some work. So I took this out to the range yesterday, and we'll put the video in there, but I don't know how my uncle hunted with open sights at 88 years old, because, I mean, I don't know how well you'll see it. I doubt you'll see it at all, because, I mean, the hood that's over the front blade is completely black, so you can't make out any contrast between uh, the peep sight, the back, and the blade in the front. And we tried to shoot at a deer um, size target. Well, it's not deer size, it's miniature. So I guess it would simulate maybe shooting it at 200 meters. And I was aiming, you know, center of mass, and I had no idea where the rounds were going. So what I am gonna try and do is find another side mount scope to put on this and put it back into action because these things are amazing. I love these things. 30-30, 20 inch barrel takes uh, seven rounds in the tubular magazine and it just looks right, right? My brother has a BLR 243 and it doesn't look right when you don't have that tube magazine on it in my eyes, but there it is. And then the 24 inch barrel, you can put eight rounds and the 26 inch barrel, you can put nine rounds, but I would argue that this particular 20 inch 3030 30, uh, is probably the most popular, or at least it was back in the day for hunting. And you can see that on the side here where they took the, the screws out for mounting the side mount uh, plate for the scope. And I don't know what kind of screws those are, and I don't know where they got them. I don't know if the threads match. I really hope that it hasn't been uh, destroyed in that manner. It's still a capable bush gun. I would take it if I was short range hunting, but I just want to talk about like, you know, th this in my left hand is a 30-30 cartridge and it's 150 grain, which is significant. Uh, I'm not sure why it was hunting, hunting 150 grain. Maybe it's availability. It's pretty hard to find these cartridges right now because of the uh, proliferation or the, I, I guess the market is just, you know, modern, hunting rifles. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor, 130 grain, soft point, and I mean you can just look at the difference between the two cartridges. You know, this one here is coming out of that barrel screaming, nice flat trajectory. This one I think at 200 meters is even dropping like 7 inches. So that's why people don't really hunt with these anymore unless, uh, and my uncle was very much that, very much old school. So we're going to put some of the, the video in there of shooting. Chambering, I mean, it, it works flawlessly. It'll cycle the round every single time. Uh, but, at least for me, I, I need a little bit of an optic on there, and I'm going to explore the options and see what's out there. But if you have one of these laying around, you are very fortunate because they just don't make them anymore. And I just looked to see how much a new Winchester Model 94, if you could find one, out of the, the factory in Japan, and they're going for $1,500 US. So somewhere around $2,000 Canadian. Uh, I'm glad that this came back to me. I will not sell it, 
and this will probably end up in my kids' hands when I am done hunting. Maybe when I get around 90 years old and I can't really huff it out in the woods anymore. But there it is, Model 94. Hope you like the video. In fact, if you do like these videos, click like, please subscribe, helping me out, and comment below if you still have one of these old fellas kicking around. Or if, I'd like to see how uh, many other calibers are out there. Or if you know of somebody who still has one of these old firearms, again, fantastic, fit and function. Like, they're just simple, repeating firearms. I love the fact that, well, I mean, there is a safety, several safeties actually, but they're built in. You don't have to flick a lever or anything like that. On the cocking handle, on the lever itself, you've almost got like a Model 1911 kind of backstrap safety that you can see there's a little piece of metal behind the trigger. So if I have like this, I cannot, even if I cock the hammer, I cannot fire the action, okay? I have to actually squeeze down on this to release that little metal tab behind the trigger and then it will go off. Uh, you cannot walk around in the woods like this, but you can put it on like a half cock, okay? That way your hammer is not resting up against the firing pin and you're in a half cock position. Definitely safe, it's not gonna fire. The only way that you can shoot this wet, uh, this firearm is to pull it all the way back. Make sure the lever is all the way squeezed and let the action go forward. Of course, under its own will, so it will strike the primer. But there it is, guys. Model 94, it's cool, I like it. I'm gonna try and clean it up, maybe get rid of some of these little gouges and stuff. Uh, I got a couple of tricks for doing that. And then uh, maybe we'll do a video on that. Let me know in the comments if you guys would like to see a video on this. I certainly like these old firearms, and uh, I'm hoping you guys do too. Have a good one.